Happy New Year! 2022 has begun, and do you know what our church theme of this new year is? Go deeper, go higher. Shall we say it all together one more time? Go deeper, go higher. In 2022, I would love to dive into the Word of God so I can fly higher with God. How about you? Don't you want a closer and deeper relationship with God? If so, I would like to invite you to Eliza Morning Prayer. Starting tomorrow until Saturday, Eliza Morning Prayer will be held. I have another piece of good news. Some of you have probably heard about QT. QT stands for Quiet Time with God. It would be a great way to get close to God if we listen to Him every day. So, ta-da! This is the Korean QT book, and the English version will be provided in a PDF file on a weekly basis. I'm guessing most of you would like to receive the English version, but if you want the Korean version, you can purchase it at the church office. Let's start 2022 with Elijah morning prayer and doing QT every day. I can guarantee that we're all going to go deeper and go higher. Now it's time to worship. Are you guys ready? Let's start.
Hi boys and girls, can you believe that today is the first week of 2022? I'm so excited about what God is going to do in this new year. Aren't you excited too? Today's Bible verse comes from Exodus chapter 14 verse 13. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. Exodus chapter 14 verse 13. Amen. Hi boys and girls, it's Pastor April. Oh my, didn't it rain so much this past week? What did you do to stay dry and warm? Umbrellas? Of course, I carried around my umbrella everywhere. What else? Oh yeah, I wore these yesterday. They're actually very practical when you have to walk through puddles. Can you guess what it is? Yeah, rain boots. They definitely help you deal with the rain. I love wearing my rain boots because they keep my feet dry. But some days when it rains so hard, no matter how hard you try, you can't really keep your entire body completely dry. Either your shoulders or hair or feet gets wet, doesn't it? But do you guys know in today's Bible story, the Israelites walked through the ocean without getting wet? Like not even a little bit. That sounds pretty amazing, right? You want to listen to it? All right, let's dive into our Bible story. Boys and girls, let's quickly review what happened in last week's Bible story. Long ago, the Egyptians gave a hard time to God's people. Work, 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 they always had to work. But God had a special plan for Moses. Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, has said. Let my people go. But Pharaoh made the Israelites work even harder because of this. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? Why should I obey him? No, Israel may not go. No. So God sent 10 plagues to punish the Egyptians. First, God turned the Nile River into blood. The water smelled really bad and of course people couldn't drink water from the river anymore. God sent frogs, he sent gnats and flies, he even made all the animals die. But still, Pharaoh would still say no, no. and he did not let God's people go. God sent painful boils that covered people. He even sent a terrible hailstorm. Locusts ate up all the crops, but still Pharaoh would not change his mind. Darkness covered Egypt for three days. And finally, God sent the last plague. God struck every firstborn son in the land of Egypt. There wasn't a single house without someone dead, but God kept the Israelites safe. Finally, Pharaoh let God's people go. Go and serve the Lord, he said. The Israelites were ready to leave. 600,000 men and their family and animals left Egypt quickly. God had a special plan for them in a place called Canaan. It was a long and tough journey though. They walked and walked and walked and walked. God led the Israelites with a pillar of cloud when it was hot during the day and a pillar of fire when it got dark and cold in the night. God was always with them. He protected them and led them no matter where they were. Meanwhile, King Pharaoh changed his mind and sent his soldiers to chase after God's people. Hurry and bring them back. I need them back to do my work, Pharaoh said. God knew Pharaoh was going to change his mind. Pharaoh's soldiers in 600 chariots started to chase after the Israelites. God led his people through the desert to the edge of a great sea. But the people said, wait, but how are we gonna cross the sea? They were stuck with the giant sea in front of them and an army behind them. They didn't have a boat to cross the sea. 
and it was way too big to swim across. The army was getting closer and closer and closer. The Israelites saw them coming, and they were afraid. They said, "We're all gonna die." But Moses said, "Do not be afraid. God brought you here, and He will fight for you." Yes, boys and girls, God exactly knew what to do. Of course, our God had a plan. God told Moses, "Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water." God sent a big, strong wind, and it blew a path in the sea. There was a big wall of water on their right and left, and the middle was dry ground. Look, the sea is divided. Everyone walked safely across the dry ground to the other side. When Pharaoh's soldiers saw this, they tried to follow across the path too. But God told Moses again to stretch his hand over the sea, and the wind stopped blowing, and the waves came crashing down. Everyone who saw what had happened sang a song to the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my song. They said. He has become my salvation. God helped Moses and protected the Israelites just as He promised. Wait, let's take a quick quiz from today's Bible story. What did Moses tell the people when they were afraid in front of the giant sea? That's right. Moses told the people to not be afraid and that God will fight for them. God had promised to rescue them out of Egypt. Does God keep His promises? Yes, God always keeps His promises because He is faithful. Christ connection. God used Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and to escape through the Red Sea. But do you know that the Bible says that Jesus Christ is greater than Moses? God rescued us from our sins through Jesus Christ. Today's Bible story was awesome, wasn't it? Now, shall we pray to God, who is always faithful? All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for always protecting us and leading us. Help us to not be afraid, but trust you, who will always is and will be the same. We love you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen.
The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Amen. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of a house of slavery. Exodus 22. Amen. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Amen. The virgin will conceive and and give birth to the son and call it Emmanuel. Isaiah 7, 14. God remembered his confidence with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Exodus chapter 2, verse 24. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Amen. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah 7, 14. Amen. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel, Isaiah 7, 14. And the Lord your God who brought you out of the land, Eden, out of the house of the slavery. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Amen. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, Isaiah 7, 14. Amen. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Amen. Sunday.